One of the biggest nightmares for any guy is a problem affecting his penis. And none of those problems or medical conditions are so frightening as penile cancer. Now the unfortunate part is that this rare type of cancer is on the rise. In the last 30 years, its numbers increased with more than 20%. Therefore, it's oh so important that you're able to recognize it in an early stage. And that is where today's video comes in. We will focus on penile cancer. I will explain what it is, what symptoms it can cause, and how you can potentially prevent it or how a treatment plan could look like. So make sure to watch the whole video so you don't miss any important information. And let's get learned. There are many different forms of penile cancer. Penile cancer is rare and it can affect the cells inside of your penis or the skin cells of your penis. And depending what type of cells are affected, a different type of penile cancer occurs. 95% of all cases of penile cancer come from squamous cells. This type of penile cancer usually starts under the foreskin of the penis, but can also occur at different sites. Other types of penile cancer include melanomas, which come from melanocytes. Those produce pigment, which colors your skin. Sarcomas, which come from tissue like blood vessels, fat and muscle. And basal cell carcinomas, which are found in the deep layers of your skin. And you might wonder now, how is penile cancer caused and how does it occur? Unfortunately, this is not specifically known. However, there are several factors which can increase your risk of developing it. Those in medical terms are called risk factors. The most common ones are being infected with the human papilloma virus, HPV or HIV, being affected with phimosis. This is a medical condition where the foreskin is so tight that it can be retracted over the head of the penis. This makes the penis very hard to clean, leading to a buildup of smegma under the foreskin. Smegma is a combination of shed skin cells, skin oils and moisture. Ultimately, this can increase the risk for developing penile cancer. For the same reasons, not being circumcised also increases your risk for developing penile cancer, as if you are circumcised, it is easier to clean the head of the penis, thereby removing all of the smegma. It will also lower your chances of becoming infected with HPV. In addition, other risk factors are smoking, being 60 years or older, having a weakened immune system, lack of personal hygiene, a low socioeconomic status, varying bath partners, overexposure to UV radiation, obesity, and being affected with leakage sclerosis. As mentioned, penile cancer is on the rise. However, it still is very rare. In most countries, there are between 0.45 and 1.7 new cases per 100,000 people every year. Most of those affected are between the ages of 50 and 70. Now, the most affected side of the penis itself is in 48% of all cases the head of the penis. In 21% of cases, it's the foreskin, and in 9% it's a combination of those two. Which brings us to the symptoms of penile cancer. And by far the most common symptom is a change in the skin of your penis itself. A rash, swelling or a crusty bump can occur, which looks like an unhealed scab or a sore. There also might be changes of thickness or color of the skin, where a bluish brownish color might appear. Furthermore, you might develop a bad smelling discharge underneath your foreskin, and a lump might appear under the skin of your groin. It is important here to mention that these signs are aspecific, which means they can also be caused by many other different medical conditions, like an allergic reaction or an infection. But it is important to visit your doctor and get a checkup, because you can better be safe than sorry. So if you are worried that you might be dealing with penile cancer, or if you do experience any of the previously mentioned symptoms, then please contact your doctor. He or she can help you to find out the extent of your symptoms and the underlying problems and causes. Your doctor might do this by asking about your current symptoms, your medical history and the medication you're using. Afterwards, your doctor might do a physical examination and if necessary, you might be referred to a urologist. This is a medical specialist that might recommend imaging testing like x-rays, CT scans, ultrasound, MRI or a biopsy. Now, before we continue with some useful tips and tricks or a potential treatment plan, I hope you're learning a lot. 
If you do, please click the like and subscribe button. It will help out the channel tremendously. It's free and you can always change your mind. Let's continue. So this week, when I was doing my research for this video, I came up with some useful tips and tricks. But I want to mention that there are no sure ways to prevent penile cancer. However, there are tips which can potentially reduce your risk. So if you have a foreskin, make sure to carefully clean underneath it. Do so every day. It could also help to go for a circumcision, which makes it easier to clean the foreskin. If you are smoking cigarettes regularly, consider to quit. This will reduce your risk. Always practice safe sex. This will help you to avoid an HPV and HIV infection. And lastly, it's always helpful to have the best immune system possible. You do this by being in mental and physical balance. So make sure to take good care of your body. Get exercise regularly, have a healthy sleeping schedule, have a healthy diet, lower your weight if necessary, and relax sometimes. Do some fun things with your family, and this will all help you to be more healthy. Which brings us to some useful treatment options. And here I want to mention that penile cancer often can be treated very well if it is found early. The treatment itself differs depending on the location, size and type of cancer in combination with the fact if the cancer has spread, your age and general health. However, in general, when the cancer still is in the early stage, most treatment plans will include a medication in the form of a cream for your skin, cryotherapy, which is a procedure that uses extreme cold liquid or a device to freeze and destroy cancerous tissue, and several types of surgery, like a circumcision if the full skin is effective, or most surgery, where the effective tissue is removed one layer at a time until healthy tissue is reached. When the cancer is in the later stage or when it has spread, your treatment plan might include surgery to remove some or all lymph nodes in your groin, radiation and or chemotherapy, or a total surgical removal of your penis, called a penectomy. Here it is important to mention that most treatments used in the early stage of penile cancer will not affect your ability to have sex. However, some of the treatment options in late stage penile cancer can affect your ability to have sex. So always discuss this with your personal doctor. Now I hope you know now what penile cancer is, how it can be caused, and how a treatment plan can look like. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and I will do my best to answer each and every one of them. For those of you that can't get enough, check out the playlist in the description with more awesome content or check out my TikTok, Facebook or Instagram at How to Medicate. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you want to click the like and subscribe button, this will help out your channel tremendously and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye bye.